What up YouTube, it's your boy Slim Jim. I'm going to make this quick. And this is a video to address the no true Scotsman fallacy. No true Scotsman, huh? Well, all right, laddie, let's do this. <laughs> Greetings fellow space travelers, Bionic Dance here. We are going to discuss the logical fallacy known as No True Scotsman. The No True Scotsman fallacy occurs when somebody attempts to defend a sweeping, universal claim made about a group, usually a group of people, that has been shown to be untrue. The example given in Wikipedia goes as follows. No Scotsman puts sugar on his porridge. I'm Scottish and I put sugar on my porridge. Well, no true Scotsman puts sugar on his porridge. Do you see the problem? First, why would anyone eat porridge? Cause, ew. But second, the first person is making a sweeping universal generalization about people from Scotland. And yet, this universal statement is shown to be untrue because there's someone out there who likes porridge with sugar in who fits every necessary criterion for being Scottish, namely having been born, raised, and lived in Scotland. And while it may seem as if the first person is trying to say that nationality is contingent as much on behavior as it is on citizenship or ancestry, what they're really saying is, I made a stupid statement, I was caught, and now I'm embarrassed. And now we've got our buddy Slim Jim 77 m who wants to show us why this fallacy is nothing of the kind. So, the reason why No True Scotsman is dead on arrival is because in the construct of the fallacy, it ignores the concept of counterfeit. In fact, that's completely wrong, because what this fallacy addresses is the concept of counterfeit, a false claim of counterfeit. Basically, the only way the No True Scotsman fallacy holds water is in an ocean with, when there's no counterfeit, where there is no fake. And that is exactly the point. Both of these people are Scottish. They meet every necessary condition to be a Scotsman. There is nothing about them that is counterfeit. And yet one of them claims that the other is not a true Scotsman because of some criterion that has nothing to do with their nationality. It'd be no different than trying to claim somebody is not a human being, not a true human being, because they prefer opera to rock and roll. Trying to claim that musical preference can negate biology is not just illogical, it's freaking insane. And it's no less illogical than trying to claim that nationality can be negated by how you prefer your breakfast gruel. And it's real simple, right? Take a $100 bill out of your wallet, a real $100 bill. Go ahead and put it on a flatbed scanner and then print it out on your inkjet printer. And then attempt to use that $100 bill at your local store and see the reaction you get. But that's not the scenario that the No True Scotsman fallacy addresses. They would be justified in telling you that that's not a real $100 bill because it doesn't meet all of the necessary criteria to be one. A situation that the No True Scotsman fallacy would actually address would be when the person knows that the $100 bill is real, is actual currency, but it happens to possess or lack a trait that they feel is necessary and thus they claim that it's counterfeit. A good example would be if they had a $100 bill that was made by the U.S. government that is legal tender, not counterfeit in any way, but they claim that it's not a true $100 bill because the serial number happens to be odd instead of even. See, atheists love to fall back on the no true Scotsman fallacy. Telling atheists what we love to do? Right to Palin. Because they do not want to acknowledge that what defines a Christian is in the Bible. Is it now? And yet there are how many different denominations of Christianity all around the world? It seems to me that if what makes someone a Christian, a true Christian, is in the Bible, a lot of people didn't get the message, or at least badly misinterpreted it. If what makes you a true Christian isn't believing in the Christian God, I sure don't know what is. Man, look at all those different denominations go. Atheists have no respect for the Bible. They think it's a book of tales and fairy tales. They rather rely on the dictionary, which is a more round and about secular definition of Christians. First of all, telling atheists what we'd prefer to do? It's a peddling. 
And why wouldn't I want to rely on the dictionary? It seems none of you can agree on what makes someone a true Christian, that there are so many different ways to be a Christian, that the most technical definition is the one that's most useful. Probably the most egregious violation of the no true Scotsman fallacy on the part of Christians is when somebody loses their faith and leaves the church. We're talking about someone who did sincerely believe in God, who followed the teachings of Jesus Christ, who really, really genuinely felt that they themselves were a Christian. And yet, how often have we heard in this situation, they were never a true Christian. No true Christian could possibly lose their faith. There was nothing counterfeit about this person as a Christian before questioning their beliefs and losing their faith. They genuinely believed in a God. They followed the teachings of Jesus and, I assume, the Ten Commandments. They meant it. They met every criteria necessary to be a Christian. And yet, if I had to guess based on the evidence, what I seem to be seeing is that Christians are not so much concerned that former church members used to not be sincere or genuine, but rather a distaste for change that is not in the church's favor. But as I say, that's a guess, not an assertion. No paddling for me. So, it's obvious that they love to use the no true Scotsman fallacy in order to condemn Christians for certain acts. It's a Although, to be honest, you're not that far off. Because, you see, sometimes the church will try to distance itself from someone who does something horrible in the name of Christianity. Take, for example, the Westboro Baptist Church. A lot of Christian denominations out there would decry their actions, call them unbiblical. And yet, they follow the Bible a lot more closely than many Christian churches out there. You'll see a lot of other Christians saying that the Phelps clan are not real Christians, not genuine Christians, not true Christians, and that you can't blame Christianity for their behavior. Well, why not? Look, I'm perfectly willing to accept that your particular brand of Christianity is nothing like the Westboro Baptist Church. Maybe you just follow the fluffy bunny parts of the Bible. I don't know. But the fact remains that if some people do meet the minimum requirements for being Christians, like believing in the Christian God and Jesus and following the teachings in the Bible, you can't call them not true Christians just because you don't like how they're doing it. So, again, the no true Scotsman fallacy doesn't hold water. It's, it's a construct uh, of, of limited variables. And, as I hope I've shown, the fact that it is a construct of limited variables is exactly why it holds water. Until next time, fellow space travelers, this is Bionic Dance saying don't run on automatic. Instead, please think.